What's up my friends, welcome back! So I still have a lot of requests to show you how PAD works, but we have already seen a lot of videos about that. We have seen how to control some brushless motors and control the anger of a bar using PAD, we also seen a PAD control for temperatures and to control DC voltages, and also seen another PAD control for temperature but for AC voltages. And also all the drones projects that I made are controlled with PAD, and the small portable soldering iron is also controlled with PAD. But if PAD still seems very difficult for you, here I have the most basic and simple example that will show you how the P, the I and the D variables will affect the system. So this example will be better because it is a little bit more graphic. You can see the variables in any given moment. You can see the distance to the ball, how the motor is moving and so on. And also the speed of reaction is a little bit slower than in the case of the brushless motors. So we can see all the details. This is called a PAD control for a balance with a ping pong ball. So the basic principle of this will go like this. We have an infrared sensor that would measure the distance from the sensor to the ping pong ball. And at the same time we have a servo motor that will move the bar up and down and by that control the position of the ball. So all we have to do is to apply the PAD control and react to the speed and to the position of the ball and keep this ping pong ball always in the middle. Everything is controlled with an Arduino that will measure the distance to the ball and also control the servo motor. So it is pretty obvious that if the ball is a little bit more to the right, the ball will move and push the ball to the left. And if the ball is a little bit more to the left, it will do just the opposite. Ok, just let me show you a quick example. I'm powering the power supply and as you can see the ball should stop exactly in the middle, pretty much in the middle. And this will oscillate a little bit because the sensor that I'm using is not very precise and will have a little bit of error. So let me just stop this because it makes a lot of noise. The idea goes like this, we have to use PAD control to keep the ball exactly in the middle. So in this video I will show you how the system works, how to build it and we will also make a lot of tests and try different values for the PID constants. And finally we will merge everything together into a PID control. I will try to explain the best that I can how to tune the PID constants. And once you know how to set up this example, you could apply the same theory to any kind of PID control. But before you start, make sure that you hit the subscribe button but also that notification bell because otherwise you might miss my future videos. The notification systems for the YouTube videos changed a little bit in the last few months. So make sure that you activate the notification bell but also that you enable notifications in your device. And in that way you will be able to see my videos when I post them. And as always, a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my work. So let's get started. GLC PCB is sponsoring this video. They provide fast and best value prototyping services. With their online and instant quote, fast fabrication and competitive prices, you can save a lot of time and money. So quote now, upload the Gerbil files of your PCB and for only $2 plus shipping, you can order PCBs in less than 5 minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start by building the balance first. This will be very easy and very fast. If you want to make this same experiment and learn how this works, you will have the 3D files for the balance below this video. Print the parts with PLA material, 0.4mm nozzle and a 0.2mm layer height. We have this main support. Then we have some small parts that will create some sort of hinge that could move left and right. We have this support for the Futaba servo motor and we also have a disc that will be connected to the shaft of this motor. Then we have these small parts that will be used to transfer the movement from the servo motor to the balance. We also have these plastic end stops that will be used later. For the moving rail I will be using some plywood parts, because printing parts this big it will take a lot of time. I will glue these two parts one to each other with a 90 degrees in between and then the ping pong ball will be able to roll on this groove. I will screw the entire balance to another piece of plywood and that's it for the body of this project. So once the glue for the long plywood part is dry, I glue that to this plastic part and make sure that the part is exactly in the middle, so the balance will rotate with the same force to each side. Then I screw the main base to the other plywood part using some entry screws. Now I add a short 8mm screw to this other part. 
Now on top of this support, I add the balance. And I place a 3mm screw and I make sure it could rotate with low friction right and left, so now the main body of the balance is ready. To control the movement I use the S30 03 Futaba servo motor. And to measure the distance I first wanted to use the VL53 L0X laser distance sensor. But that wasn't precise enough for distances above 20 cm. That's why I've used another infrared sensor, the Sharp 2Y0821. So I glue the other small parts to one side of the balance. Now I make this other part with a wood barbecue stick in between. I measure more or less where to place the servo support. Now I add the servo motor to that support and I screw that in place. Now I put the servo in the 0 degrees position and I add the disc using the given star shaped part from the servo and I tie the screw. Now I screw the support in place and connect that to the balance. And now it will move up and down and by that it will change the angle of the balance. Below you will find some different sizes for the disc in case that you need faster or slower movement. And for the infrared sensor again, I will finally use the Sharp 2Y0821 because the other sensor lost the good resolution over 20 cm. This one has a lower resolution, but is kind of the same over the entire range, from 0 to around 40 cm. So I glue the sensor to one end of the balance. I also add a 10 microfarad capacitor as a filter at the sensor output. So set the schematic for more. I place another end stop to the other side. Now I pass all the wires and connect those to the Arduino. That will be placed here and the setup is ready for tests. So check the schematic for this below and also the final code. And download that code and upload it to the Arduino. And let's start with the tests. In the code on this part you will see the KP, the KI and the KD. And you could change these PID constants if you want and try some different values. Any PID system will need 3 main parts. First we need a feedback, which in this case is given by the distance sensor. Then we need an actuator, that will change the system output. And in this case that will be the servo motor. And finally we will need a PID code in between with a set point. And that set point in this case will be the middle position of the balance. So when we measure the distance it will be half of the balance length. Ok so first we have to see the proportional action that will have this equation. So for that I put the KP equal to a value and I will leave the KI and KD equal to 0. So now only the KP will affect the output. The sensor will measure the distance to the ball. If the distance is not 0 it will move the servo proportionally till the distance gets closer to the center. So look what happens with the KP equal to 20. The system oscillates too much and also too fast, so we have to put a lower value. I now make the same test but I lower KP equal to 8. So now we have a pretty decent oscillation. But the ping pong ball won't stay in the middle and that's pretty obvious. If the distance is too high, the balance will rotate clockwise. And if the distance is too low, it will rotate counterclockwise. And that will always end up in an oscillation. But don't worry, that is good for us. All we have to do now is to rapidly stop the ball when it's in the desired position. In order to make some fast changes, we have to react to the speed of the ball, not to the distance anymore. But speed is equal to the distance divided by the time, and that's delta x divided by delta t, where the x is the distance and the t is the time. So we need the derivative part of the PAD control, that will have this equation. Now I put all the constants to 0, but I set the derivative part to 5000. Now look what happens. The reaction to the speed of the ball is too strong, so we have to lower the value. So now I set the KD to 3500. Now as you can see the system reacts very fast to the speed, not to the distance anymore, and by that it will stop the movement. But now we have a different problem. Now the ball will stop in any position and we don't want that. We want it to stop exactly in the middle. So for that, before as you remember, with the P control, the ball passed in the middle each oscillation. And now with the D control, we could stop the ball. So if we combine these two together, we could both stop the ball and also exactly in the middle. 
I now make some more tests, but I make the sum of the P and the D constant. And this is called a PD control, and this is the equation. As you can see now, I stop the ball and it is also close to the center, so my system works quite well for now. But what will the I variable add to the setup? Well, for example, in this scenario, the ball stops at around 1 or 2 cm, so that's not exactly in the middle. The balance isn't moving anymore because the error is too small, so the proportional part won't affect. Also, the ball is not moving, so the speed is zero, so the derivative part won't affect neither. That's why we need to add the integral. This part will sum up each loop in the code and by that will get bigger and bigger. To understand better, I set all the constants to zero, but I put the integral to one. So now I block the ball and let's see the effect. As you can see, the more time passes, the bigger the integral part will get, and the more the balance will rotate. So, if the ball gets stuck at for example 2 cm, the integral part will slowly increase, till the ball is exactly in the middle. So that is done very fast in the code, and we will get the good PID control. So now I make the sum of all three variables with this equation. The output of my PD control will be a PWM signal that will be applied to the servo motor and that will move from 0 to 180 degrees. Now I have a pretty decent control and the ball will stop in the middle, no matter how fast I move it or from where I move it. So I hope this simple example explained how basic PID control works and why we need each of the P, the I and the D variables. If you know these basics, you could apply the same algorithm to any other system and control speed, control the angle, the temperature and so on. In any case you will need a feedback which in this example was given by the distance sensor. In the brushless motor balance, the feedback was given by the MU module that measured the inclination angle and in the temperature PD control example, the feedback was given by a temperature sensor that was placed over the heating element. You always need a feedback an actuator and the PID code in between the feedback and the actuator. In my case the ball is not that stable, because the sensor has some small error readings between 1 and minus 1 cm, but it will stop the ball pretty decent. With better sensors, better filter and better PID values, you could get way better results than I have. So guys, I hope that you like this experiment and that you have learned something new. If so, consider subscribing. And please make sure that you activate the notification bell, because otherwise you won't receive my notifications when I upload a new video. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.